Right, we've now got a nice mechanism. This, of course, you'll recognise as being nucleophilic addition. Um, and I'm using sodium bihydrate, which produces a hydride ion. They've given me the first step. What I have to do is add coli arrows to this step. That oh, you know, he's got a low pair, so he is going to attack that delta plus hydrogen, and that bond's going to break and go onto the oxygen. So your product is this one. This mechanism is well worth learning. So I've drawn the structure. What is meant by the term nucleophile? Um, a nucleophile is an electron pair donor. Again, learn this. Electron pair donor, like so. A slightly uh, strange question. Describe in words what exactly is happening to the electron pairs and bonds in step one. So let's go through this. So in step one, the low pair of electrons on the hydride ion is attracted to the delta plus carbon atom. And that forms a dative covalent bond, which is going to be that one there. So that gets attracted, that forms a dative covalent bond with delta plus carbon. So that's that atom. What's happening here? The pi bond between carbon oxygen breaks and the electron pair go to the O atom to form O minus. Okie dokie. So, uh, next one, um, moving on, it gives me the proton and MR. The region of the electromagnetic spectrum used, of course, is radio waves. So it tells me that compound F can be prepared from propanol in a two-stage synthesis, and it has the molecular formula C4H8O2. So if you think about it, propanol's got three carbons in it. So uh, propanol is this. But the compound that I've made has got four carbons in it, and it's got two oxygens. So we've added a carbon and we've added an oxygen. So we're kind of thinking ester, I think. Um, just to, just to like, give us an idea. So I've got four carbons I need to, need to think about it. I've got uh, three proton NMR signals. So um, I've got three distinct groups of hydrogen, which would make sense for an ester, because obviously I have that group there. I've got a carbon with no hydrogens on it at all. So let's have a look at um, where we are. I've got this here. Um, if you have a look between three and four, it could be um, a hydrogen on a carbon attached to chlorine or a hydrogen attached to a carbon on a bromine, neither of which I've got. However, it is O, C, H goes quite nicely. So if you have a think about it, that is not split at all. That's there, so it looks to me like I've only got that group there because I haven't got any neighbours attached to it. That means I must have my other two carbons on that side. What have I got? I've got a quartet and a triplet. I've got a signal around about 1.1 1 .1 or so. That is just going to be a normal RCH3 group. However, it's, a, it's split into a triplet and therefore it must have must have two hydrogens on neighbouring carbon. This one is around about 2.4, 2.3, something like that. Um, if you have a look at that, that relates quite nicely to that group there. Um, and again, he is split into a quartet, so he must have three H's on neighbouring carbon. So, does that make sense? That would be that group there. He has got three neighbours on the three hydrogens on the neighbouring carbon, and then that group is that thing then with two hydrogens on neighbouring carbon. So that's the molecule that you have. 
So rather helpfully, they now give me the flow chart. I've got propanol here giving me compound E, compound F. Uh, so I've got propanol becoming compound E. Compound F we just identified as being ester. So compound E is going to be propanoic acid, which I must have made by using potassium dichromate in acid and reflux uh, to oxidise an aldehyde to carboxylic acid. Um, I just checked, does it know? So to make compound F, not that you need this, you'd obviously be adding uh, methanol in concentrated sulfuric acid to that to give you the ester. Right, um, on to some benzene chemistry now. Equation for the reaction of benzene. Uh, probably one of the first things you did as part of your AS course. Benzene with chlorine, you know, gives you chlorobenzene plus HCl. How does it work? The halogen carrier is AlCl3. Doesn't matter whether it's aluminium or iron, works in the same way. That's going to meet chlorine. You should remember that the electrophile is Cl plus. So I'm going to make Cl plus. So the other thing that I'm going to make is AlCl4 minus. So it breaks that chlorine molecule in half. Uh, that is obviously going to be heterolytic bond fission because I split that into Cl minus and Cl plus. The Cl minus goes there to form that, and that leaves Cl plus um, on its own. Outline the mechanism for this. Mechanism, again, probably one of the first things you would have done. Cl plus, out come the electrons to attack the Cl plus. That gives me the intermediate, like so with a positive charge on the benzene ring. The carbon hydrogen bond breaks, which goes in the middle of that bond to give you chlorobenzene plus H plus. Um, the next step is what do we call this mechanism? It is of course electrophilic substitution. Okay, we've now got our reactivity where we compare the reactivity of an alkene um, and benzene, why is that? Well, in benzene, I've got six pi electrons, but they are spread over six carbon carbon bonds. You'll remember that we say they are delocalized. However, in an alkene, I've got two pi electrons over one carbon-carbon bond. So, there is a greater electron density for alkenes, and therefore, uh, electrophiles will be more polarized. Again, this one is well worth uh, knowing. Um, the other one, of course, that comes up is uh, phenol as well. Um, that's quite a popular reactivity one as well. Oh, right, okay. Um, so it's talking about concentrated sulfuric acid and how it uh, forms water when it dehydrates compounds. And you know this because you've looked at the dehydration of alcohols to give you alkenes and water. Sulfuric acid dehydrates methanoic acid to form a gas with the same molar mass as ethene. So ethene is C2H4, which is going to have a molar mass of 28. What could it be? Well, let's write out methanoic acid. Methanoic acid is going to be that guy there. What atoms have I got to play around with? Well, I've got carbon and oxygen to play around with. Carbon is 12 and oxygen is 16. Oh, looks, if I add those up together, that gives me 28. So it's going to be carbon monoxide. 
So G is carbon monoxide. I've got to make carbon monoxide as my product. If I remove a C and an O, it looks to me like I'm left with a H2O to do that. So that's your equation for the first one. Sulfuric acid dehydrates sucrose to form a black solid, suggests an identity of H and Y in equation. So what do you reckon a black solid is going to be? Well, what have I got? I've got carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. Black solid, hopefully you'll remember uh, carbon is a black solid. How many am I going to make? Well, I'm going to have to make 12 because I've got 12 carbons there. H22O11. What else do I generally make? Well, it tells me up here I generally make water as well. So I'm going to make H2O. How many do I need to make to get it to balance? I need 11 H2O. Okay, this one is a slightly uh, harder one. Um, let's, I tell you what I'm going to start off with ethane 1, 2, diamond, which is this boy here. And it tells me in this reaction, two of those produces one mole of I, which I don't know, and two moles of H2O. So what am I left with? If I, I've got two of those, if I can have all your atoms in here, and then you remove two waters, you are left with C4, H8O. Um, so that's not too bad, is it? That's kind of like just counting atoms, um, saying what you've got. What is this going to be? Well, as long as you come up, oh, actually that's wrong, isn't it? It's C4H8O2. Um, if you count up your atoms um, and try and put them into formula, uh, the, the one that's on the mark scheme is that guy. Um, I'm not sure if anybody would actually think to make that a cyclic compound. However, you can play around and put some um, double bonds in and uh, so on. Um, you've also got perhaps, um, let's have a look, I've got four carbons. If I put in maybe a couple of al uh, yeah, aldehyde groups, that would be one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, let's remove one of those and put an OH. So then I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then I've got my O2 like so. So that gives my C4, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, O2, like so. So that's probably more of a reasonable um, uh, example.